Panopticon, Wikipedia article audio. The Panopticon is a type of institutional building and a system of control designed by the English philosopher and social theorist Jeremy Bentham in the late 18th century. The scheme of the design is to allow all inmates of an institution to be observed by a single watchman without the inmates being able to tell whether or not they are being watched. Although it is physically impossible for the single watchman to observe all the inmates' cells at once, the fact that the inmates cannot know when they are being watched means that they are motivated to act as though they are being watched at all times. Thus they are effectively compelled to regulate their own behavior. The name may also allude to the many-eyed giant panoptes in Greek mythology, some of whose eyes were always awake, making him a highly effective watchman. Conceptual History Abortive Prison Project Prison Designs Claimed Influence Similar structures Criticism and use as metaphor Literature and the arts Sources The design consists of a circular structure with an inspection house at its center, from which the manager or staff of the institution is able to watch the inmates. The inmates, who are stationed around the perimeter of the structure, are unable to see into the inspection house. Bentham conceived the basic plan as being equally applicable to hospitals, schools, sanatoriums, and asylums, but he devoted most of his efforts to developing a design for a panopticon prison. It is his prison that is now most widely meant by the term panopticon. Bentham described the panopticon as a new mode of obtaining power of mind over mind, in a quantity hitherto without example. Elsewhere, in a letter, he described the panopticon prison as a mill for grinding rogues honest. Morals reformed health preserved industry invigorated instruction diffused public burthens lightened economy seated, as it were upon a rock the Gordian knot of the poor law not cut, but untied all by a simple idea in architecture. In 1786 and 1787, Bentham travelled to Krichev in White Russia to visit his brother, Samuel, who was engaged in managing various industrial and other projects for Prince Potemkin. It was Samuel who conceived the basic idea of a circular building at the hub of a larger compound as a means of allowing a small number of managers to oversee the activities of a large and unskilled workforce. Jeremy began to develop this model, particularly as applicable to prisons, and outlined his ideas in a series of letters sent home to his father in England. He supplemented the supervisory principle with the idea of contract management, that is, an administration by contract as opposed to trust, where the director would have a pecuniary interest in lowering the average rate of mortality. The panopticon was intended to be cheaper than the prisons of his time, as it required fewer staff, allow me to construct a prison on this model. Bentham requested to a committee for the reform of criminal law, I will be the jailer. You will see, that the jailer will have no salary will cost nothing to the nation. As the watchmen cannot be seen, they need not be on duty at all times, effectively leaving the watching to the watched. According to Bentham's design, the prisoners would also be used as menial labor, walking on wheels to spin looms or run a water wheel. This would decrease the cost of the prison and give a possible source of income. On his return to England from Russia, Bentham continued to work on the idea of a panopticon prison, and commissioned drawings from an architect, Willie Reveille. In 1791, he published the material he had written as a book, although he continued to refine his proposals for many years to come. He had by now decided that he wanted to see the prison built, 
when finished, it would be managed by himself as contractor governor, with the assistance of Samuel. After unsuccessful attempts to interest the authorities in Ireland and revolutionary France, he started trying to persuade the Prime Minister, William Pitt, to revive an earlier abandoned scheme for a national penitentiary in England, this time to be built as a panopticon. He was eventually successful in winning over Pitt and his advisers, and in 1794 was paid £2,000 for preliminary work on the project. The intended site was one that had been authorised for the earlier penitentiary, at Battersea Rise, but the new proposals ran into technical legal problems and objections from the local landowner, Earl Spencer. Other sites were considered, including one at Hanging Wood, near Woolwich, but all proved unsatisfactory. Eventually Bentham turned to a site at Tothill Fields, near Westminster. Although this was common land, with no landowner, there were a number of parties with interests in it, including Earl Grosvenor, who owned a house on an adjacent site and objected to the idea of a prison overlooking it. Again, therefore, the scheme ground to a halt. At this point, however, it became clear that a nearby site at Millbank, adjoining the Thames, was available for sale, and this time things ran more smoothly. Using government money, Bentham bought the land on behalf of the Crown for £12,000 in November 1799. From his point of view, the site was far from ideal, being marshy, unhealthy, and too small. When he asked the government for more land and more money, however, the response was that he should build only a small-scale experimental prison which he interpreted as meaning that there was little real commitment to the concept of the panopticon as a cornerstone of penal reform. Negotiations continued, but in 1801 Pitt resigned from office, and in 1803 the new Addington administration decided not to proceed with the project. Bentham was devastated they have murdered my best days. Nevertheless, a few years later the government revived the idea of a national penitentiary, and in 1811 and 1812 returned specifically to the idea of a panopticon. Bentham, now aged 63, was still willing to be governor. However, as it became clear that there was still no real commitment to the proposal, he abandoned hope, and instead turned his attentions to extracting financial compensation for his years of fruitless effort. His initial claim was for the enormous sum of nearly £700,000, but he eventually settled for the more modest sum of £23,000. An Act of Parliament in 1812 transferred his title in the sight to the Crown. Bentham remained bitter throughout his later life about the rejection of the Panopticon scheme, convinced that it had been thwarted by the King and an aristocratic elite. It was largely because of his sense of injustice and frustration that he developed his ideas of sinister interest that is, of the vested interests of the powerful conspiring against a wider public interest which underpinned many of his broader arguments for reform. The National Penitentiary was indeed subsequently built on the Millbank site, but to a design by William Williams that owed little to the Panopticon, beyond the fact that the governor's quarters, administrative offices and chapel were placed at the centre of the complex. It opened in 1816. The building's circular A cage, glazed a glass lantern about the size of Ranelagh the prisoners in their cells, occupying the circumference the officers in the centre. By blinds and other contrivances, the inspectors concealed from the observation of the prisoners, hence the sentiment of a sort of omnipresence the whole circuit reviewable with little or if necessary without any, 
change of place. One station in the inspection part affording the most perfect view of every cell. The architecture incorporates a tower central to a circular building that is divided into cells, each cell extending the entire thickness of the building to allow inner and outer windows. The occupants of the cells are thus backlit, isolated from one another by walls, and subject to scrutiny both collectively and individually by an observer in the tower who remains unseen. Toward this end, Bentham envisioned not only Venetian blinds on the tower observation ports but also maze-like connections among tower rooms to avoid glints of light or noise that might betray the presence of an observer. No true panopticon prisons to Bentham's designs have ever been built. The closest are, the buildings of the now-closed Presidio Modelo in Cuba, Pavel Haudase Aranca, 1896, architect José María Nepomuceno, now part of an outsider art and science museum, in Miguel Bomarda Hospital, Lisbon, Portugal, Otun Penitentiary, France, Breda and Arnhem Penitentiaries. 1884, architect Johann Frederick Metzlar, Netherlands, Harlem Penitentiary, 1901, Netherlands, Stateville Penitentiary, 1919, Illinois, USA, architect C. Herrick Hammond. Although most prison designs have included elements of surveillance, the essential elements of Bentham's design were not only that the custodians should be able to view the prisoners at all times, but also that the prisoners should be unable to see the custodians, and so could never be sure whether or not they were under surveillance. This objective was extremely difficult to achieve within the constraints of the available technology, which explains why Bentham spent so many years reworking his plans. Subsequent 19th-century prison designs enabled the custodians to keep the doors of cells and the outsides of buildings under observation, but not to see the prisoners in their cells. Something close to a realization of Bentham's vision only became possible through 20th-century technological developments notably closed-circuit television but these eliminated the need for a specific architectural framework. It has been argued that the panopticon influenced the radial design of 19th-century prisons built on the principles of the separate system. In these prisons control was exercised through strict prisoner isolation rather than surveillance, but they also incorporated a design of radiating wings, allowing a centrally located guard to observe the door of every cell. As noted, None of these prisons with the arguable exceptions mentioned above are true panopticons in the Benthamic sense. In some cases, the claims for any influence are very dubious indeed, and seem to be based on little more than the fact that the design is circular. Bentham always conceived the panopticon principle as being beneficial to the design of a variety of institutions in which surveillance was important including hospitals, schools, workhouses, and lunatic asylums, as well as prisons. In particular, he developed it in his ideas for a crestomythic school, in which teaching was to be undertaken by senior pupils on the Monito Real principle, under the overall supervision of the master, and for a pauper industry house. A wooden panopticon factory capable of holding 5,000 workers, was constructed by Samuel Bentham in St. Petersburg, on the banks of the Neva River, between 1805 and 1808, its purpose was to educate and employ young men in trades connected with the Navy. It burned down in 1818. The round mill in Belper, Derbyshire, England, is supposed to have been built on the panopticon principle with a central overseer. Designed by William Strutt, and constructed in 1811, 
it had fallen into disuse by the beginning of the 20th century and was demolished in 1959. The Worcester State Hospital, Massachusetts, USA, constructed in the late 19th century, extensively employed panoptic structures to allow more efficient observation of the wards. It was considered a model facility at the time. The Panopticon has been suggested as an open hospital architecture. Hospitals required knowledge of contacts, contagions, proximity, and crowding, at the same time to divide space and keep it open, assuring a surveillance which is both global and individualizing. The Akron Plan common in American Protestant church buildings in the late 19th and early 20th centuries is based on similar principles to the Panopticon, although there is no evidence of direct influence. Despite the fact that no Panopticon was built during Bentham's lifetime, his concept has prompted considerable discussion and debate. Whereas Bentham himself regarded the Panopticon as a rational, enlightened, and therefore just, solution to societal problems, his ideas have been repeatedly criticized by others for their reductive, mechanistic, and inhumane approach to human lives. Thus, in 1841, Augustus Pugin published the second edition of his work Contrasts in which one plate showed a modern poorhouse, a bleak and comfortless structure in which the pauper is separated from his family, subjected to a harsh discipline, fed on a minimal diet, and consigned after death to medical dissection, contrasted with an antient poorhouse, an architecturally inspiring religious institution in which the pauper is treated throughout with humanity and dignity. In 1965, American historian Gertrude Himmelfarb published an essay, The Haunted House of Jeremy Bentham, in which she depicted Bentham's mechanism of surveillance as a tool of oppression and social control. Parallel arguments were put forward by French psychoanalyst Jacqueline Miller in an essay entitled Le Despotisme de l'Udil, La Machine Panoptique de Jeremy Bentham, written in 1973 and published in 1975. Most influentially, the idea of the Panopticon was invoked by French philosopher Michel Foucault, in his Discipline and Punish, as a metaphor for modern disciplinary societies and their pervasive inclination to observe and normalize. This means that the Panopticon operates as a power mechanism. On the whole, Therefore, one can speak of the formation of a disciplinary society in this movement that stretches from the enclosed disciplines, a sort of social quarantine, to an indefinitely generalizable mechanism of panopticism. The panopticon is an ideal architectural figure of modern disciplinary power. The panopticon creates a consciousness of permanent visibility as a form of power where no bars, chains, and heavy locks are necessary for domination anymore. Instead of actual surveillance, the mere threat of surveillance is what disciplines society into behaving according to rules and norms. Furthermore, the spectator of the panopticon changes in Foucault's account, for the idea that fellow people are watching and spectating reinforces the disciplinary society. Foucault proposes that not only prisons but all hierarchical structures like the army, schools, hospitals, and factories have evolved through history to resemble Bentham's panopticon. The notoriety of the design today stems from Foucault's famous analysis of it. Building on Foucault Contemporary social critics often assert that technology has allowed for the deployment of panoptic structures invisibly throughout society. Surveillance by CCTV cameras in public spaces is an example of a technology that brings the gaze of a superior into the daily lives of the populace. Furthermore, 
a number of cities in the United Kingdom, including Middlesbrough, Bristol, Brighton, and London have added loudspeakers to a number of their existing CCTV cameras. They can transmit the voice of a camera supervisor to issue audible messages to the public. Similarly, critical analyses of Internet practice have suggested that the Internet allows for a panoptic form of observation. ISPs are able to track users' activities, while user-generated content means that daily social activity may be recorded and broadcast online. Shoshana Zuboff used the metaphor of the panopticon in her book In the Age of the Smart Machine, The Future of Work and Power to describe how computer technology makes work more visible. Zuboff examined how computer systems were used to track the behavior and output of workers. She used the term panopticon because the workers could not tell that they were being spied on while the manager was able to check their work continuously. As the book was written in 1988, Zuboff's arguments were based on dialogue rather than the World Wide Web. Zuboff argued that there is a collective responsibility formed by the hierarchy in the information panopticon that eliminates subjective opinions and judgments of managers on their employees. Because each employee's contribution to the production process is translated into objective data, it becomes more important for managers to be able to analyze the work rather than analyze the people. In 1991 Mohammed Kauser used the metaphor in the title of his book The Critical Panopticon, Essays in the Theater and Contemporary Aesthetics, American University Studies. Derek Jensen and Gerge Draffen's 2004 book Welcome to the Machine, Science, Surveillance and the Culture of Control seeks to demonstrate how our society, by techniques like the use of biometric passports to identity chips in consumer goods, from nanoparticle weapons to body-enhancing and mind-altering drugs for soldiers, is being pushed towards a panopticon-like state. In his 1998 essay, The Baha'i Faith in America as Panopticon, 1963-1997, academic Juan Cole compares the Baha'i administration's control over members of the Baha'i Faith to Panopticon. The Panopticon has also become a symbol of the extreme measures that some companies take in the name of efficiency as well as to guard against employee theft documented in a 2009 paper by Max Hyven and Scott Stoneman entitled Walmart, The Panopticon of Time and the 2014 book by Simon Head, Mindless, Why Smarter Machines Are Making Dumber Humans that describes conditions at an Amazon.com depot in Augsburg, Germany. Both argue that catering at all times to the desires of the customer can lead to increasingly oppressive corporate environments and quotas in which many warehouse workers can no longer keep up with demands of management. Allegheny County Courthouse and Jail Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, United States, Pavel Haudase Aranka, now a museum of patient and outsider art and science of Miguel Bomarda Hospital, Lisbon, Portugal, who Balasage Yarmut Fejihaz E.S. Borden Balasage Yarmut, Hungary, the Bridewell Edinburgh, Scotland, Carabanchal Prison Madrid, Spain, Palacio de Justicia y Carcel de Vigo Vigo, Spain, Caseros Prison Buenos Aires, Argentina, Palacio de Lecumberi Mexico City, Mexico, Chihua Ho Chi Minh City. Vietnam, Flery Maragis Prison Flery Maragis, France, Huron Historic Jail Goderich, Ontario, Canada, Insane Prison Insane, Burma, Kilmanham Jail Dublin, Ireland, Copel Javanginese Arnhem, Netherlands, Copel Javanginese Breda Netherlands, Copel Javanginese Harlem, Netherlands, Lancaster Castle Jail Lancaster, England, 
Prison Modelo Barcelona, Spain, Mount Eden Prisons Auckland, New Zealand, a prison to incarcerate anti-fascists, follows his vision closely, Okraglok Arist Sled GW. Torinio Torin, Poland. Old Bilibid Prison Manila City Jail, Philippines, Old Provost Grahamstown, South Africa, Panoptico de Cundinamarca Bogota, Colombia, Pelican Bay State Prison del Norte County, California, United States, Port Arthur, Tasmania Prison Colony Port Arthur, Tasmania, Australia, Pent Ridge Prison Airing Yards, Melbourne, Presidio Modelo Isla de la Juventud, Cuba, Corradino Correctional Facilities Paula, Malta, Roundhouse Fremantle, Western Australia, Australia although not a panopticon, this circular prison building of 1830 was designed by Henry Willie Reveille, the son of Bentham's architect collaborator, Willie Reveille, Special Handling Unit St. Ande Plains, Quebec, Canada, Stateville Correctional Center Crest Hill, IL, United States, Twin Towers Correctional Facility Los Angeles, CA, United States, Sach Senyazen Concentration Camp Oranienburg, Germany, Lapis Sukamiskin Bandung, Indonesia, The Circle at Parramatta Prison Sydney, Australia, Central Area, United States. Military Academy Social theorist Simone Brown reviews Bentham's theories in her book Dark Matters, on the surveillance of blackness. She notes that Bentham traveled on a ship carrying a cargo of what he calls 18 young negresses while drafting his Panopticon proposal, and argues that the structure of chattel slavery haunts the theory of the Panopticon. She proposes that the plan of the slave ship Brooks, produced and distributed by the Society for Effecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade in 1789, should be regarded as the paradigmatic blueprint for what she calls racializing surveillance. 